section 8.2 similarity. After studying this section, you'll be able to identify the characteristics of similar figures. Now in our examples below, we can see three pairs of similar figures, or figures that had the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. We can see in the first figure that we reduced the size, the second figure we enlarged the size, and the third figure we reduced the size. So the way in which a figure similar to another figure can be produced is called a dilation or an enlargement, and then the opposite of a dilation, called a reduction, also produces similar figures. Looking at this example, we have a pinhole camera produces a reduced image of a candle. The size of the image is proportional to the distance of the candle from the camera. Given the measurements shown in the diagram, find the height of the candle. Notice here how it says it's proportional in distance, so I can create a proportion to solve for h, the height of the candle. I want to stay consistent when I set up my proportion, though. I want to keep both of my distances from the larger candle together, and then both of my distances from the smaller candle together. I can do it vice versa as well. I could keep the heights of the candles together, as well as the distances of the candles together. There's many different proportions that I could set up. So setting up a proportion, if I kept my heights together, I would have h over 2. If I have h in the numerator, then I need 20 in the numerator. So h over 2 would equal 20 over 5. Then if I multiplied out, I'd get 5h equals 40 and h equals 8. Now if I set up a different proportion, let's say I kept my smaller size together and then my larger size together, I could have 2 over 5. If my height of the smaller candle is on top, then I need h on top, and I could have h over 20. If I still multiplied this out, this would give me a height of 8 still. I can create many different proportions. I just need to make sure that I'm consistent in keeping the same things together. So the candle here is 8 centimeters tall. Looking at our definition of similar polygons, similar polygons are polygons in which the ratios of the measures of corresponding sides are equal and corresponding angles are congruent. So here we have two triangles below that are similar triangles. They have the same shape, but they differ in size. Notice we have the sides in proportion. So 8 over 4 is equal to 12 over 6, which is equal to 10 over 5, which all would simplify to 2. We can write triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, which means that A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, and C corresponds to F. It's the same as our congruence statement. However, now we don't have congruence, we have similarity. So we'd still say that A matches with D, B matches with E, and C matches with F. Looking at example 2, we have triangle MCN is a dilation of triangle MED with an enlargement ratio of 2 to 1 for each pair of corresponding sides. Find the length of the sides of triangle MCN. So I'd want to find side length MN, side length CM, and side length CN. I can tell side length MN goes from 0 to 6, so this is a side length of 6. Side length CM goes from 0 to 8, so this is a side length of 8. I know this is a right triangle because one of my legs is the y-axis and the other leg is the x-axis. The y and x-axis are perpendicular, therefore this is a right triangle. Since this is a right triangle, I can use Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared plus 8 squared would equal cn squared. 6 squared plus 8 squared is 100, so cn squared is 100. I'd take the square root and cn would be 10. So my side lengths would be 6, 8, and 10. Now theorem 61 tells us the ratio of the perimeters of two similar polygons equals the ratio of any pair of corresponding sides. Because if we think about it, if I keep increasing by the same ratio each time, let's say two-thirds, two-thirds would go to four-sixths, would go to six-ninths, would go to eight-twelfths. If I simplified this again, it would still be two-thirds. So as long as I keep increasing my perimeters in proportion to one another, the ratio of the perimeters will still be the ratio of any pair of corresponding sides. Now looking at our simple problems, we have problem one. Given that triangle JHK is similar to triangle POM, angle H is 90 degrees, angle J is 40 degrees, measure of angle M is X plus 5, and the measure of angle O is 1 half Y, find the values of X and Y. So if triangle JHK is similar to triangle POM, then I know their angles are congruent. So angle J would be congruent to angle P, 
angle H is congruent to angle O and angle K is congruent to angle M. I know that angle H is 90 degrees, so that means angle O is 90 degrees. I know angle J is 40 degrees, so that means angle P is 40 degrees. I know all three angles would add to 180, so 40 plus 90 is 130. 180 minus 130 would make angle K and angle M 50 degrees. I know that measure of angle M is X plus 5. Well, the measure of angle M is 50, so X plus 5 will equal 50, making X 45. And I know the measure of angle O is 1 half Y. O is 90 degrees, so 1 half Y will equal 90, so Y is 180. So I have X 45 and Y 180. Looking at problem two, we're given triangle BAT is similar to triangle DOT. OT is 15, BT is 12, TD is 9. I want to find the value of X, which is side AO. Since these triangles are similar, I know that the ratios of their corresponding sides are equal. So I can set up a proportion to solve for X. Now there's many different proportions that I could set up. I just have to make sure that I'm consistent in my numerators and my denominators. So if I set up the ratios of their lengths first, I'd have a length of 9 and a length of 12. So I could say 9 over 12. I could also say 12 over 9. I just have to be consistent in my second ratio. So if I have 9 in the numerator, that's the smaller length. I'd need the smaller height in the numerator, so that would be 15. Then I would have 15 plus x as my big height because I don't know what x is, but I can say that this whole length at, which is the whole side, is 15 plus x. Now I can use my means extremes product theorem to multiply this out. Instead of doing 9 and 12, I'm going to simplify this by taking out a 3 and making this 3 over 4 just to make my multiplication a little bit easier. Multiplying this out, I would get 60 is equal to 3 times 15 plus x, which would simplify to 45 plus 3x. I'll subtract 45 from both sides to get 15 is equal to 3x, and then x would be equal to 5. So AO, segment AO, is 5. Looking at problem three in the diagram, segments PA, PB, and PC are drawn to the vertices of triangle ABC from an external point P, then extended to three times their original lengths to points A prime, B prime, C prime. What are the lengths of the sides of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? So if they're extended to three times their original lengths, we're just making a dilation. So I can multiply each of their lengths by three to give me the lengths of the new sides. So AB, 12 times 3 would give me a side length A prime B prime of 36. CB is 10. 10 times 3 would give me a side length of 30. And then 15 times 3 would give me a side length of 45. So my side lengths are 30, 36, and 45. In today's lesson, we learned a similar figure has the same shape but not the same size. Similar polygons are polygons in which the ratios of the measures of corresponding sides are equal and corresponding angles are congruent. And the ratios of the perimeters of two similar polygons equals the ratio of any pair of corresponding sides. That's a wrap on today's video. We'll see you in the next one.